All right. Let's try this again. So Mark Twain once said that there are three types of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. On the other hand, we have these contemporary philosophers, Jay-Z, YG, and Lil Wayne, who have all repeatedly professed that men lie, women lie, but numbers don't. So who's right? Are the numbers the end-all, be-all of everything, like the rappers say? Or are numbers, are, complete, are numbers a complete wash, like Mark Twain says? So even though all of these statements were professed by very different people at very different times, in very different contexts, their implications have never been more important than they are now. So data analytics is the use of math and computer science to analyze large banks of data and extrapolating conclusions from those. And data analytics is used in many various fields today. However, most prevalently, prevalently is used in basketball and sports in general. So I undertook a research project this year in which I analyzed the win shares of last season's Cleveland Cavaliers. So what a win share is, is it's a metric that attempts to divide up the credit to, of, a season's, of a team's win for each season to each player based on their offensive and defensive output. So as we can see from this pie chart, for the Cleveland Cavaliers last year, LeBron James attributed about, contributed about 10 wins himself to the total 53 wins they had. Kyrie and Kevin Love contributed about nine wins apiece. Tristan Thompson about seven, so on and so forth. So with these win shares, I, uh, I calculated a few formulas and extrapolated some theoretical salaries that each player should be getting paid based on their win shares. Then I put it in this computer program and let it calculate the percent differences between the actual and the theoretical salaries to see who's getting under or overpaid. So this type of tool would be great for a team to analyze a player like Matthew Delvadova, who's a pretty average player uh, in terms of the league standards. He contributed about three wins to Cleveland's 53 wins last season, as you can see here. He was only paid $800,000 last season, whereas his, his output warranted a salary closer to about five or six million dollars. So a team like Cleveland could use this dashboard if they once Matthew Delvadova's contract is up and his agents and Matthew Delvadova himself come up to the front office and say, hey, we want a five-year, $35 million extension, which would divide up into $7 million a year. Now, if the Cavaliers had something like this, they could see that $7 million a year is very close to the shooting range of what his theoretical salary should be. So it's a very fair price to pay for a very fair player. So you might have noticed the most uh, kind of egregious outlier on this dashboard, which would be Brendan Haywood, who is apparently getting paid over 800% of what he should be being paid. So this is one of the abstract factors that a dashboard will never, a dashboard or any type of analytical method would never be able to truly quantify, is the value of a leader. So Brendan Haywood was in the, uh, for the prior season, he was in the league for 15 years, and he had won the championship once with the Dallas Mavericks. And this Cavaliers team was relatively young, and many of the players on the Cavaliers hadn't even gone to the playoffs before. So in signing him for $2 million, the Cavaliers weren't expecting a guy who would put up 20 points and 10 rebounds a game. Rather, they were expecting a guy who would lead the younger, the younger guys in the locker room through the arduous journey of the playoffs. So I also wanted to look at the 2000 to 2001 Los Angeles Lakers on their second title run when they beat the Sixers in the finals. So specifically, I wanted to look at Robert Ory, who's known as one of the clutchest players in NBA history, as indicated by his nickname, Big Shot Bob. So as we can see from the regular season data, he was getting paid about uh, $5 million. But due to his low win share value, he should have only been paid about 3.6. However, let's watch this clip and see what the numbers say about this. Kevin Ory with a three-point play. Kevin Ollie fifth year out of the University of Connecticut, getting his first playing time, able to convert on a three-pointer, and the Sixers are within one with just under one minute remaining, fourth quarter. So they get the ball out of Kobe Bryant's hands, but Robert Ory hits from downtown, and that has something to say to fans and the crowd. That's it. So as we can see here, this was a huge shot that sealed the deal in a very important game in the finals for the Lakers. So the ability and knack to kind of perform under such immense pressure in the fourth quarter of an extremely, extremely important game 
is something that can never truly be quantified by a number. So this all goes back to the original question. Who was right, the rappers or Mark Twain? Now, this, these two ends of the spectrum on uh, numbers are kind of paralleled in the sports world, where we have guys like Billy Bean of the Oakland Athletics and Daryl Morey of the Houston Rockets, who have both constructed teams from the ground up based solely on analytics. However, we have the other side of the spectrum with coaches like Byron Scott and analysts like Charles Barkley, who would go so far as to say that those who believe in analytics are idiots. Now, while, while both of these sides are kind of extreme, the question still remains, who is right? Are numbers the end all be all of everything, or are they complete washes? Now, the real answer is that neither are correct. We should, in this day of advanced math and computer science, we should use numbers to, our be to the best of our abilities and combine them with our classical methods to put out the best product possible. Thank you, and Mamba out.